play the game of checkers, first, set up the game. To do this, first set out the game board, somewhere between both players. Each player will sit on one end of the board. The game should be oriented so the side of the board facing each player has the light colored square on the right corner of the board. The game of checkers can be played on any 8x8 game board and is played on the same board as the game of chess. Next, each player will collect all 12 of the pieces in their chosen color. Players can decide on their color in any way they see fit. After collecting their pieces, both players will place their pieces on the game board. The game of checkers is only played using the dark squares on the board. Each player will place one of their pieces on each of the dark squares of the first three rows of the game board. If you don't have an official checker set available, it is easy to make your own DIY version of the game. To do this, simply make an 8x8 grid on a piece of paper or a piece of cardboard. Shade in every other square to make a checkerboard. Objects such as bottle caps or coins can be used for the pieces. After setting up the game, players are ready to begin playing. The game of checkers is a two-player strategy game where players are trying to be the first to capture all of their opponent's pieces. To start the game, the player playing with the dark pieces will be the start player and take the first turn. That player will choose one of their pieces to move. After they choose one piece to move, their opponent will choose one of their pieces to move. And both players will continue taking turns moving one of their pieces on the game board. There are a few rules they must follow to move their piece. While moving a single piece, a player must always move forward. So this player will always be moving in this direction. And this player will always be moving in this direction. All single pieces in the game start on the dark squares of the game board, and they will remain on the dark squares for the entire game by always moving diagonally. So this player could move this piece here, or here, and their opponent could move their piece here, or here. Players are not allowed to jump over their own pieces. Each player will have to move the pieces in front of their other pieces to be able to move them. So if this player wanted to move this piece, they would have to move this piece on one turn and then this piece on another turn. As the game gets going, players will begin capturing their opponent's pieces. A player will capture their opponent's piece when it is in the square diagonally in front of them and the square in front of their opponent's piece is empty. The player capturing will jump over their opponent's piece and capture it. The captured piece will be placed in that player's area. Now the other player would jump over their opponent's piece like this and capture it. This player, however, could not capture this piece because it would require the piece to move backward toward the side it started. Players may never move a single piece backward. They will always move a single piece toward their opponent's side of the board. There is one important rule that players must remember when it comes to capturing. If one of your pieces is able to capture one of your opponent's pieces, you must capture it. So if it was the turn of the player using the red pieces, they would have to capture this piece because their piece is in position to capture it. So this player could not skip jumping and move this piece instead. They would have to take the jump that presented itself and capture their opponent's piece. This may seem like a strange rule at first, but it actually adds another layer of strategy to the game and at times can be used to capture your opponent's pieces by sacrificing one of your own. If there are several ways to capture the piece, that player can choose which way they capture it. So the player using the black pieces must capture this piece, but they could either capture it with this piece or this piece. The player can choose which one to use but they must capture the piece on their turn. If a player can jump several pieces and continue moving in a forward direction, they must make all of the jumps and capture all of those pieces. If a player has multiple captures they can make, they may choose which one they actually make. So the player using the red pieces could capture this piece, or this piece, 
or they could use this piece to jump these two pieces. The player may choose which jump they make, and they are not required to make the move that captures the most pieces. They just must make one of these possible captures on their turn. If a player reaches the last row of their opponent's side of the game board with one of their pieces, that piece immediately becomes a king. To mark a king piece, the player will gain one of their pieces that their opponent captured and place it on top of that piece. A king piece is more powerful than a single piece. King pieces still must move diagonally, but they do not have to move forward. A king piece may move in any direction. A king may also capture in any direction. So this king could capture all of these pieces. It should be noted that if a player jumped one of their opponent's pieces to become a king, that player's movement ends when it becomes a king. This player would not be allowed to start using the king's movement ability to continue capturing by taking this piece. If a player reaches their opponent's side and promotes a single piece to a king, but there are not pieces available to mark the piece as a king, that player may use any available object to mark it, such as a coin. Even though a king piece is more powerful in its movement ability, it does not have any extra protection powers, so it may still be captured, just like any piece on the game board. So a single piece could still capture a king piece by jumping over it like this. The captured king will go into the player's area as two captured pieces. The game of checkers will end with either a single winner or it will end in a draw with no winner. There are two ways a player can win the game. The first way a player can win the game is by capturing their opponent's last piece. A player will immediately win the game if they are able to capture their opponent's last piece on the game board. It should be noted that the rule that a player must capture another player's piece if they have the opportunity to do so can help a player win the game. For example, in this game, this player moves their king here on their turn. This player must now jump over that player's king with their king on their turn. Now this player can jump this player's last king to win the game. The player playing with the red pieces sacrificed one of their kings so they could ultimately take the other player's last king. The other way a player can win the game is by trapping their opponent. If a player is able to trap their opponent's remaining pieces in such a way that their opponent has no legal move on their turn, that player will be declared the winner. So this player has trapped their opponent because this single piece has no forward space open to move to, and their other king piece is trapped as well. The player who trapped their opponent is the winner. The other way a game can end is in a draw. A draw is a game without a winner. The first way a game can end in a draw is if players move their pieces back and forth to the same positions three times. For example, the game board looks like this. If this player moved here, then this player moved here, then this player moved back here, and this player moved back here, these players would have just repeated the same board layout a second time. If the players continued these moves in the exact same way, they would have created the exact same board a third time. If this occurred, the game will immediately end in a draw. This rule is so the game doesn't go on indefinitely, with players repeating the same move over and over. Even though the player playing with the red pieces has one more piece on the game board, this game would still end in a draw, without a definite winner. The other way the game can end in a draw is if players make a hundred moves on the game board without a capture being made, with each player making 50 moves without capturing. If players are unsure how many moves have been taken, they can agree to end in a draw if the game seems it will end without a winner. Again, this is a way to prevent the game from going on too long with players simply chasing each other around the board.